Welcome to worship. We made the second Corinthians chapter nine. Just getting my mask taken off here. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Remember, we were in the middle of that section where Paul wrote a letter and he sent it on ahead. He says, I'm going to be coming. He says, remember, you started that offering like a year ago that you were going to uh, take up. We were going to take it back to and give to the poor church at Jerusalem, the Christian Jews at Jerusalem. And I've been bragging on you, he said. Everywhere I've went, I've been telling them how I know they'll do the right thing up there. They've already started. And he says, now, but he thought it might be a good idea to send some guys on ahead and make sure they've got started in order so that we not be uh, embarrassed when we all get there. But uh, I said, chapter 8, he talked to heavy about that offering, the whole thing. And I don't think he ever used the word offering. He, talked, he called it this grace. And he's going to do the same thing in chapter 9. It's going to be this, this ministering to the saints, so verse 9. Or chapter 9, verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, this offering that we've been talking about, that churches have got together and they've elected folks to go with us to make sure we get it back and we're doing everything in transparent and, and in order and we're going to take it back to Jerusalem because you're all doing good down there, but they need help. So as touching this ministering to the saints, that'd be the church at Jerusalem, it's superfluous. For me to write to you, that's a word that you don't use too much, is it superfluous? It just means, uh, we would have said it this way, as touching that ministry to the saints that we're going to take back, to, there's no need that I even write to you, because I, I know you're going to do the right thing. No need, and it's unnecessary, because you'll do over and above anyway. For I know, Paul says, for I know the forwardness of your mind. I know, I know y'all, I know you'll do the right thing. For which I boast of you, to them of Macedonia. When I was around the churches down in Macedonia, everywhere I went, I said, boy, you can count on that church. They're a given church. They're going to come through with this offering and help them Jews out down there that's struggling. That Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. In other words, because you'll be zealous in this offering, says uh, maybe they'll provoke other people who want to be zealous too. And as I was thinking about this this evening, reading over it again, I thought, you know, Paul sure was bragging on them, wasn't he? Now, he was bragging about them in advance, wasn't he? And he bragged on them so much to other churches and stuff that I think Paul was getting a little bit nervous. That said, I know that you'll do the right thing. We'll have a really nice offer and everything, but I'm going to write you this letter to make sure we do the right thing. But I thought, you know, I want to brag on you all. <laughs> Cleveland Community Chapel needs to be bragged on. I was putting up a... a receipt and a thank you note that I got out of the mailbox one morning this week from the Gideons for a nice Gideon offer for, for Christmas and you can read it's on the board out there and it's, it talks about their, how amazed they continue to be with this church and it said even in a time when many churches are just struggling to continue through this pandemic and that's absolutely true and as I was putting that on the board and I was looking out there at our mission board on the other side of the wall and I, I got to thinking about all those things, you know, just stop and let that sink in every once in a while. And I got to thinking about, the, I may have my movies mixed up, but ain't it a Jimmy Stewart movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Mm -hmm. and it's a Christmas movie, you know, and the angel shows him what the world would be like if he never existed. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know he did all that. And I got to think, you know, Okay, if Cleveland Community Chapel shuts down today, or let's just say if Cleveland Community Chapel never existed for the last 20 years, all those good things on that board would never have happened. Then I got to thinking, they said, I got my calculator out, and we do over 200 newsletters a week, 50 weeks a year. I think you multiply that by 20 years, and if I did my math right, that's over 200,000 newsletters that have gone out into homes. And for the past year or since the pandemic started, 10 months or something, we put four messages a week on the Facebook, right? And I mean, you just go on and on about, you know, do that Jimmy Stewart movie, It's a Wonderful Life, and just say, what if Cleveland Community Chapel never existed? But the thing I really wanted to brag on you about, as Paul's bragging on the Corinthian church, is 
over 10,000 Bibles have gone out of this church in 20 years to be placed out in society. That's amazing. That's over $50,000 if you just count the big Bibles. The little New Testaments that they give to the school kids are a lot less than that, half price of that or something. But you get to thinking about that, and then you, you add what we learned that of all the churches in Bradley County, the church that places more Bibles every year through the Gideons is not First Baptist, and it's not Westwood, and it's not North Cleveland Church of God. I know them churches, they've probably got all kinds of good big ministries too. But it's Little Old Cleveland Community Chapel. And that's amazing. And that's kind of what Paul was saying about these Corinthians. He was saying it in advance. He said, I know that I can count on you, and we're going to have a good offering to take back down there and help those churches in Jerusalem out. Verse 3, yet, even though I know it's good, yet I, 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 Paul, you can tell, he put a lot of pastoral thought in things too. How to do this the right way where it look appropriate and everything, then he's sending people to advance to get them to make sure that it's ready to go when he gets there. He didn't want to get there and have to start, go get some money, let's get it together. In fact, he wrote them a letter like a year ago and said he was coming to get this offer and help them other churches out and said to, Go ahead and be setting something aside on the first day of the week that there be no gatherings when I come. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, you'll be ready. You'll have it ready. Lest, happily, if perchance, if they of Macedonia come with me, <coughs> this is his fear. Now I'm going to bring some of them churches, people with me that I've been bragging about you too. And he says, if some of them come with me and I get up there and, boy, we're not ready, we're going to be embarrassed. Let's happily, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, though we say not ye, would be ashamed in this same confident boasting. I'd be sorry I'd been bragging. I'd been so, my face had turned red. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort or encourage the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand... Before I get there, your bounty, your gift, whereof you had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, and he's going to quote out of Proverbs, I believe, where this comes from. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And that's an agricultural illustration and it's kind of like okay you're gonna you're gonna go into business farming now if you go into business farming and get everything ready and say i'm gonna go down here to hardware and i get one of them little packs of seeds it's got an ounce in it <laughs> that might be all right for the window box or maybe a little spot in the garden or something but if you're going to get into big time farming you're not going to sow sparingly you're going to sow bountifully because the more you sow the more your crop will come in and Paul takes that illustration and he uses it, I think, the way Proverbs too, about basically it says, you can't outgive God. And hold that thought because that's going to be the theme toward the end of this chapter. You can't outgive God. Every man, he's talking about giving now, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. In other words, it's like you make a commitment to the Lord in yourself and you go hold yourself to that commitment. You've purposed in your heart. But he says, but now, the right way to do Christian giving is not grudgingly. Sometimes I think about my former denomination. That's the way we had to give because they killed us wanting our askings to go on up the line. There wasn't nothing in the local church because it had to go on up to support the big bureaucratic institution. And the district superintendents, they, they always had their foot on the pastor's neck and the bishops had their foot on the district superintendent's neck and the pastors had to have their foot on the people's neck because we've got to have these askings. We've got to make it. Well, you know, giving's good, but that gets into begrudgingly, don't it? We're giving because we got to. I mean, we, they need this, you know. And he says, don't even give of necessity. Now, we do that sometimes, don't we? Well, there's a need. We're going to try to meet that need. But he says, true Christian giving, it ain't because you're doing it out of necessity even. You do it cheerfully. He says, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's the kind, you know, you purpose in your heart and, and you're cheerful about it. That's Christian giving. And God is able, I thought today, if you want to feel good every morning, there's your, there's your 
refrigerator verse. Just right, and God is able, dot, 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 and put on your refrigerator when you go down and open it in the morning. Whatever you got to face that day, just remember, God is able. <laughs> and God's able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, and, and I can say amen to that. I, all my life, you know, like every human being, I guess we'd like to have more, we'd want more, but I've always had enough. It's always been sufficient. I've never missed a meal because I just didn't have anything to eat or get something with. But, but Paul says, it's not just to meet your sufficiency, though. God's able to make that grace abound toward you that it'll be sufficient for you that you'll have something to give to others, too, that you'll be able to abound to every good work. God gives to me so I can give and pass it on. As it is written, he's going to quote somewhere again here. I don't know if this is in Proverbs or not, but he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, and his righteousness remains forever. Now I'm going to point to our church again. If we've dispersed abroad, we've given to the poor, we just sent off our check to St. Jude's, we sent off a check to Alzheimer's last year, we hope to do all that stuff again this week. We're, by the way, here's something to praise the Lord about right now. In the middle of this pandemic, just as we've limped along for 10 months now, we gave our entire offering to the Gideons, and, you know, that always takes us a while to recover again. But on Sunday, we spilled over once again. 100% of tonight's offering is going in building and missions again. So, you know, give the Lord praise for that. But just as I said earlier, if, if Cleveland Community Chapel ceased to exist tonight, all the good things that this church has done for 20 years will endure for eternity. God's got a record of that. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. You know, we can give to things individually, but when we give through our church, it's multiplied in. And increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. When we give to other ministries, you know what? It, one of the great things about giving is it not just meets needs and helps people out, but it causes other people to give God thanks. And Paul takes that into consideration. <laughs> Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, this offering, he don't want to use the word, does he? It makes it kind of hard to figure out what he's talking about if you don't know. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. In other words, when that poor church down there in Jerusalem gets helped out by you, they've been a little suspicious of them Gentiles coming in anyway. And they'll say, you know what? I believe them Gentiles really are Christians. They've submitted to God. Look, they've got given hearts now, and they're helping folks out. For your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And they'll pray for you. Here's another good thing that comes out of giving and helping, though. Them, them folks will pray for you. You'll get a good reputation among them, and they'll pray for you. Which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. They'll recognize God's grace at work in you. Now I said, hold that thought a minute. It goes just 15 verses tonight. Here's the last one. I said, hold that thought. The theme is that you can't outgive God. And one of the reasons you can't outgive God is because if, if we gave everything we've got and everything we've had and everything we will have, we ain't ever going to pay God back for what he's done for us. Amen. And he says, thanks be unto God. Last verse. For his unspeakable gift. Now there's lots of things that we can thank God for. As James says, every good gift comes down from our Father of lights. <laughs> but the most precious gift of all, his words can't even describe gift, though we try all the time when we get up here, is the gift of his Son. And God's motive was love. For God so loved the world that he gave, what did he give? His only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, be lost in the devil's hell, but have everlasting life in God's glorious heaven. 
Lord, we do thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you for the motive being love. And Lord, as we practice Christian giving that discipline in our lives, may we do it cheerfully. And may our motive not be because there's a need or some begrudging something, but may our motive be the same as your motive when you give. We give out of love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.